I'm sorry, chapter 3. I want to minister a message this morning, and I've entitled it, Holiness is a Requirement. Holiness is a Requirement. Now, when I say holiness, I'm not talking about old school legalism. That was never holiness. That was just legalism. But there is a real holiness for the people of God. We need to, number one, know what it is, and we need to cooperate with the Holy Spirit to bring us into deeper and deeper realities of His holiness. In the book of Hebrews, and we'll just read this and, and, and pray, chapter 12, just one verse, verse 14, the writer of Hebrews, whom I believe to be Paul, says, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you this morning for who you are. We thank you that you are the solid rock. Lord, that we're able to put our lives, our hearts, our whole eternity, Lord, we're able to set it upon that solid foundation of Christ. Now, Father, I'd ask you this morning as people give throughout the day that you would bless those uh, that give in support of this ministry, the households, the individuals. Lord, whether they're here in the worship room or watching on the online experience, Lord, let your grace just shower down on them and meet all of their need in accordance to your riches. Now, Father, I ask you that you'd help me this morning to maintain the focus upon that that you've given me. Lord, that you would give me an unction and that you would open the hearts of the people, Lord, to receive the engrafted word, which alone is able to save the soul. In Jesus' name we pray and we thank you. Amen and amen. Holiness is a requirement. You know, when you talk about holiness, people draw up. And they draw up many times because they don't understand what it is or what it means. And many times we relate it to what was old school legalism. Uh, but legalism is not holiness. Legalism is legalism. But there is a biblical holiness that all of us as Christians have to aspire to. And what I want to communicate to you this morning is that without that holiness being developed in you, you will not see God. You, you will not see God. Well, here's the scripture. Holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Now, that's so plain you need somebody to help you to misunderstand it. He's saying exactly what he meant. Holiness is a requirement. Now, as I look through the scriptures, I find places that Jesus, a couple that I'll share with you today, that he makes very, very clear that you must attain to holiness if you plan on spending eternity with him. So let's start with what is holiness? What is it? The word holiness in the Bible is the exact same word as sanctification. It's no difference. It's what God is trying to produce in you. And what does sanctification mean? What does holiness mean? The definition is to be separated from this evil world system. It means to be called apart to separate your lives. But the problem that we have in modern Christianity is that if you took a professing Christian and set him here, and you took a worldling and set him there, you can't tell the difference. It's going to be like this all day. You, you might as well say amen. <laughs> you can't tell the difference between the people of God and the people of the world, but holiness tells us that sanctification will produce a difference between you and the world. We should not talk like them. We should not walk like them. We should not dress like them. We should be uniquely different. Now, as we get into Revelation chapter 3, we're going to look at the letter that Jesus dictated to the church of Laodicea. Laodicea was the last day church that will be in vogue at the res resurrection of life. It's the last phase of the church. It represents the church as it exists on the planet right now. It is the weakest of all the churches. Of all the other churches, that he, seven churches he wrote letters to in Revelation, uh, he said, here's something good, here's something bad. Laodicea said nothing good about him at all. He's talking about you and me. He's talking about the church as it exists on the planet as a whole. He had no, no commendation for them whatsoever. Everything was condemnation. 
And he says to John, he says, unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans, and incidentally, this word angel should be translated pastor. He says, go tell the pastor, and I expect him to tell the people when I'm, when I'm preaching, unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans, write these things, saith the amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. It just describes Jesus as being the author of this dictated uh, letter. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou wert cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Now as we come to understand these two verses, they are biting. They are biting because they apply to the church on the planet today. First of all, he says, I know your works. You don't even have to try to explain. One of the problems that modern Christianity has fallen into is what is phrased as cultural Christianity. <clears throat> it's where people accept the culture of Christianity, but not the Christ of Christianity. They, they, they accept the love of Christ, but they do not accept the lordship of Christ. It's where we go like a religious buffet. We just pick the parts that we like. But with Jesus Christ, you either get it all or you get nothing at all. So he says, yeah, I already know. I know your works. And he begins to describe now what he knows. I know that you are neither cold nor hot. And it would be my perfect will if you were either cold or hot. Now, cold represents someone who just doesn't even know the Lord. They're just a rank sinner. They're just out there, just like you were before he saved you. I'm just out there. Hot is somebody who's on fire for God. Remember when you first got saved? Remember how that fire just burned in you all the time? Jesus is saying, I, I wish that you was either cold or hot. But because this is the only reason, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Now, what does he mean by lukewarm? <clears throat> it's exactly like in the natural. If you go to the refrigerator and get a cold glass of water, or you go to the coffee maker and get a hot cup of coffee, either one or both, and you set them on the kitchen counter, and you go off for five or you go off for a period of time, four or five hours, and you come back, both of them will have conformed to the temperature of the room. And what we have done as Christians, we have conformed to the culture of Christianity, but the lordship of Christ is out of the question for too many. And some of us that used to be flat on fire for God, we've lost the flame. There's just a, a kindling left. We've become lukewarm. We've taken on the temperature of this evil world system. When you find a Christian home's fire, you can tell, man, that brother's on fire. But how many times do you see that? Man, that's, that sister's on fire. Have you ever met somebody you can just tell they're distinctly different? They're just different. I'm not saying they're perfect. I'm saying, man, they just got a different walk. I, I don't mean to embarrass anybody. It's not my intention to embarrass anybody. When I met Sister Angela, she was a single sister that came to this church. And I knew immediately, no, that's holiness right there. That's a holiness woman. She's different. Her walk is different. And then she got married to one of the brothers here in the church, but you can still tell, yeah, that's, that's different right there. Every Christian should have that sense about them that they walk different than the world system. It doesn't mean you walk around with a necklace that says, I'm a Christian. <laughs> that, that's not what that means. It means that sanctification has worked out in your life. You're not perfect, but it's worked out in your life so that your walk is distinctly different. It's a walk of, of controlled discipline. See, when you're, when you're on fire for God, <laughs> when you're not lukewarm, lewdness doesn't come out of your mouth. Because you've disciplined yourself. I, I'm not going, that's not who I'm going to be no more. I'm going to stop that. But he says here, he says, I wish that you were hot or that you were cold. But because the reason that I'm going to spew you out of my mouth is because you're lukewarm. 
we've conformed to this evil world system. You see, where do you model yourself? <laughs> this is going to stain just a little bit. I have nothing against weaves for the sisters. If you wear a weave, I have nothing against that. That's fine. That's, as long as you're modestly adored, I, I have nothing against that. But who are you looking at on how to model your weave? Are you looking at Sexy Red? Are you looking at Beyonce? Who are you looking at? See, who are you conforming your image to? Do you hear what I'm saying this morning? The, the way that you move, I, I see something now, I just hate to see it, it just kills me when people move like if they're a rap artist. <laughs> it's like that's as abnormal as you can get. <laughs> but they've been imprinted by the current world system and it's not of God. This is going to be good today. You know the sister's got that neck pop thing? I can't even do it, but their neck pops both ways. Beyonce's the evangelist for that movement. And yet we adapt it to our life, we embrace it, we love it, and we let it express itself through us when that is not sanctification and that is not holiness. The whole attitude of it is wrong. And he says, I would, brethren, I, I would that you was hot or you was cold. Either I would rather for you, of course, to be on fire for God. But if you're not going to be that, just go on back out there and sin. <laughs> you know, if you're going to go to hell anyway, why sit up in the church and play church? Just go to hell first class if that's the way you're going. But don't come into the church and try to wear the label of Christianity when you have rejected the king of Christianity. You've rejected the ministry of the Holy Spirit and just trying to play church. See, God's getting ready to shake everything that couldn't be shook. You're going to see him shake the church so badly, by the hundreds of thousands, people are going to fall out of Christianity. Because persecution is coming. And God is telling his people that it's time now, holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. See, we're in a time now the church is so pathetically weak, we can put on our spandex and walk out in, in, in public. I know, I know. So I said, are you against spandex? No, I'm not. It's wonderful to wear at the house in front of your spouse. Go for it. <laughs> but every brother in the world doesn't need to be looking at everything that you are. That's a private treasure that you have. Man, this is good. <laughs> but we've gotten so loose that we've taken on the culture of the world. See, the world does it and we see it. And then the first thing we do, we adapt to it. And that's not, the Holy Spirit never told you to do that. But the problem is we're not listening to the Holy Spirit. The problem is we're watching whatever the, the, the show is on TV or on social media. And social media is just a, it's just a pig pen now. It's just a, a pigsty. It's so dirty and filthy. It, it's just incredible. I listen to, every now and then I'll hear a little clip of a song as a, a backdrop on, on one of the Instagrams. And the lyrics of the songs are like, oh my God, how could this even be legal to say this in the public airways? But many times we embrace that in private and it becomes part of what we are. And now we begin to live it out in front of people and we don't even know what we're doing. But Jesus is saying, I know your works. I, I know your works. I know you're neither cold nor hot. You're lukewarm to the bone. Even though you may have on the, the culture of Christianity, you've learned how to come to church on Sunday. Don't get too drunk on Saturday night so you can make it to church on Sunday. We've learned how to do that. But we've not really put on the inward adorning of, of, of the Holy Spirit. Because, verse 16, because thou art lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Now that's a drastic statement. Your digestive system begins with your mouth. You have special lining on the inside of your mouth that if you bite an apple, immediately nutrients are being extracted. It starts in your mouth. 
It goes down your esophagus to your stomach where it's extracted more nutrients. And that apple, if it is an apple that you ate, it becomes part of your body. <laughs> However, if you take a bite out of that apple and you look at where you bit and it's got worms in it. It's disgusting to you. It's repulsive. And immediately you vomit it out of your mouth because you don't want it in your body. Man, that's good preaching. <laughs> And that's what Jesus is saying. I know your works and I will spill you out of my mouth. You cannot be a member of the body of Christ if you're not allowing the Holy Spirit to adorn you with holiness. <laughs> holiness without which no man should see the Lord. So I said, but I like the way that I am. You get a choice. Yes, yeah, your choice. And then he gets his choice. Your choice does not override the choice of the Lord. And he's coming back for a church that's perfect, without a spot, without a blemish, or any such thing. That's what he's coming back for. He's not coming back for a worldly church. Now somebody says, well, what, what, what are you saying, preacher? I don't, I don't know what you're saying. Are you saying I should take off my makeup? No, I'm not. Just learn how to put it on. <laughs> it can enhance your beauty. <laughs> are, you, are you saying that I should take off my spandex? Well, possibly. <laughs> Stay at home with it. You're sharing too much of yourself with the world. And when, when people look at you, when you say you're a Christian, but you look like the world, they get confused on what a Christian is because you're not properly representing Christ. And you have to properly represent him. I will spew thee out of my mouth. You know, throughout the entirety of the Bible, we see this over and over, what is stated by Jesus Christ in this, that that worldliness will be rejected. Paul taught us, be not conformed to this world, but rather be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. In other words, there's two powers that are trying to conform you. The Holy Spirit is trying to conform you to the image of Christ, and the devil through the world system is trying to conform you to the world. And, and you have that constant battle being presented to you no matter what you look at. Everything in the world is wicked and lewd and, and ungodly, all of it. This whole ungodly world. And so every time you look at something, a TV program, a social platform, just an advertisement, your being is trying to conform you to this world. And you have to constantly, my saints, you've got to constantly stay in the word of God because it's conforming you to the image of Christ. If you're not reading this, you're losing. Oh yeah, you're losing. <laughs> you're losing. But it's just like a drunk man doesn't know that he's drunk. You're losing and you don't know that you're losing. And see, we, we live in this state of lukewarmness of which Christ has rejected. And then we're constantly saying, God, give me, give me this. God, I need that. God, I need that. And God is saying, I know what you need. <laughs> you need holiness. Because I meet all of your need in accordance to my riches. What you're doing is you're wanting something that I don't want for you. <laughs> John gave us even better instructions. And we don't hear much preaching on these. He said, do not love the world. Didn't he say it? He said, love not this world, neither the things that are in this world. He said, if you have fallen in love with this world, it means the love of the Father is not in you. That Man, that's strong preaching. That's why folks don't preach out of the epistles. Uh, John's epistles, they too tight. I mean, they tied too. <laughs> he said, love not the world, neither the things that's in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Same thing that Jesus is saying, I know your works. I know that you're in a state of lukewarmness. You have conformed to the temperature of this current world system. And it's killing our testimony. It's killing our walk. And we wonder, why is the Holy Spirit not moving in our lives? We have grieved him. We have grieved him over and over again. Now, listen, I, I want you to understand, I'm not preaching old school legalism. I'm preaching here what the Holy Spirit is telling you and obey it. Don't, don't resist it. 
Let him conform in you what he's working. Don't worry. He's not going to do it all at once. It's too big a mess. <laughs> he takes one or two things at a time and he works on that. And once you start walking in that, he takes one or two things more and he'll start, he'll start working on that. I, I may not look like much standing before you here this morning, but you didn't see where I started. I, I started, it was a hot mess. <laughs> It was problematic. And little by little, being conformed into the image of Christ. I still got a long way to go, but I'm more Christ-like now than I've ever been since I've been on this planet. And life is better. Everything is better. Amen. The money goes further. Seems like the gas don't spend as fast when I'm walking with the Lord. It seems like I'm just the, the world is bright. But here's the most important part. When my head presses the pillow at night, it's well with my soul. <laughs> I'm not fighting Jesus. The war is over. The enmity has been laid aside. I am with all of my strength trying to cooperate with the Holy Spirit. God, whatever that you want in my life, just tell me what it is. And with all my might, I will try to achieve it. And if I'm not strong enough, I'll cry out for your help. But I want what you want. So I said, what does he want? It doesn't matter. Whatever he wants, that's what I want. Amen. Revelation verse 3. Well, let me just read into it. He says, uh, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because. Here's the other, pro the, the other problem. Because thou sayest, I am rich and re increased with goods and have need of nothing. <laughs> that, that's the profession of modern Christianity. We have everything at our fingertips. I mean, if God doesn't produce like a microwave dinner, if he doesn't have a happy meal that we can just drive by the window and pick up, we have no interest in it. And here's something I found out about this word. You got to lay everything else aside. See, when you get ready to eat a T-bone steak, with mashed potatoes and green beans that your wife cooked and she can throw down, you're not thinking about McDonald's. You're thinking about what your wife just threw down. Well, this is what God has thrown down for us. Amen. It's the meat of the word. And when you get ready to get into this, all the little TV programs and all the social media posts and all the nonsense, it just drifts into the background because you're getting ready to partake of the engrafted word that is able to save the soul. But in this last hour, we said we increase, we increase with goods, and we do have money, not as much as we used to have, because God's got his hand on us. Oh, yes, God's got his hand on this nation. Look back in Israel of old, they would have times of great prosperity. They'd walk off and leave God, and God would bring a famine on them. He would bring destruction on them. He would bring enemy armies upon them. He would cause them at some points to be taken captive and taken out of their country, and they lived their lives in another country. But even in that other country, if they had God, they'd be men like Daniel, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They lived in Assyria in another country, but they was holding on to God, and they were still men of God. <laughs> yes, we're increased with goods. Because thou sayest, I'm rich. I'm increased with goods. You know, I don't care what you have. I don't care if you got... Three of them ugly Teslas sitting in your driveway. <laughs> I don't know who make a car that's so ugly. I don't care how much of it you got. Baby, you chasing the wind. <laughs> it's just a few moments of time, just a few years, and it turns into dust. It turns into vapor. It's nothing. All your goods, all your belongings, everything you own, you and I, we're just chasing the wind. And finally, they said, we have need of nothing. What they're saying is that we're now self-sufficient. We no longer have a need for Christ. We've adapted. Our technology has replaced God. If I have a question, I don't have to take it to God. I can take it to chat GPT. AI is answering all the questions now. And people have left the word of God. <laughs> because... Thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing and don't even know. He says, and no, it's not. It means you don't even know. 
You know, it's bad when you're ignorant. But when you're ignorant of the fact that you're ignorant, that makes it 10 times worse. <laughs> and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Now he's saying this, he's saying this to the people that are satisfied in a state of lukewarmness. Who are in the church but are not the church. Who hang around Christians and have learned how to conduct themselves but have, have no relationship with Christ that brings conviction upon the heart. And that's how you know whether you're really saved or not. The Holy Spirit will put his finger on your heart to the point you'll cry. To the point that you don't sleep well at night. But you know, oh man, what I did was wrong. What I, that, that was not right what I did. I don't care what level of Christianity you are at. The Holy Spirit brings conviction and says, go back and apologize. You're wrong. Get right. That's Christianity. If you don't have that, it's because the Holy Spirit is not active in your life and is the indicator that perhaps you're not born again. That may sound hard, and maybe today it's a little hard. But in the day of judgment, you're going to wish to God you had heard this. You're going to wish to God you had heard this. So they said they're rich, increased with goods, have need of nothing. Jesus says that wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. It means that Jesus' assessment of their life is absolutely contradictory of their own personal assessment. It means they see themselves as the greatest thing since sliced bread. And Jesus is saying, it's, it's so disgusting, I'll, I'll spew you out of my mouth, which is to be evicted from the body of Christ. Man, that's good preaching. Can I have just a few more minutes? There's another time in the New Testament where they came to Jesus and they were attempting to trick him through political means. And incidentally, Satan will also always use the political to trick you in the spiritual. <laughs> that's why no Christian has, you have a right to vote, vote your Christian faith, but nobody needs to be an activist in, in politics. Just drop that. It, it, that's not where God has called us to. You need to be an activist in the kingdom of God. <laughs> Amen. If you want to promote something, promote the kingdom, promote the gospel of Christ. But they were using the politics of those days to try to capture Jesus uh, in, in the spiritual sense. And they said to him, is it lawful to pay tribute to, ta to Caesar? And what they were saying, is it lawful to pay taxes? Should we pay taxes or not? And of course, in those days, the Jews hated Rome. They felt like Rome was over them. And, and they hated paying taxes. And uh, they, were, they were trying to put Jesus in this political trap to say, yes, it is or no, it isn't. So either way, it was a lose-lose for him. And Jesus, always the teacher, he said, show me the tribute money. And they gave him a penny. And he asked a question that is so piercing. Whose image and superscription is on this penny? Now the image is the picture of the person. It was Caesar whose picture was on it. The superscription is the writing that goes around just like a quarter. Now who's on a quarter? Forget who's on a quarter, but the writing kind of goes around the edges. Same, same in those days. He said, whose image is superscription? They said, Caesar's image is on it. Now that means that that coin had been conformed to the image of Caesar, which is a type of the world system. Are you with me? He said, whose superscription, whose writing is upon it? I, what writing is upon your heart this morning? <laughs> what rolls in your spirit when you're not listening to nothing? What's rolling around in your spirit? Do you have the word of God inscripted upon your heart or is it the lyrics from some filthy rap song? Hear me today. What, whose image and superscription do you bear? You know the old saints used to say it and they, they got it right. If it, if it looks like a duck, and it waddles like a duck. If it quacks like a duck, chances are you got a duck. <laughs> but if you look like the world and you walk like the world and you talk like the world and everything that exudes from your life is of the world, honey, it's the world. 
And Jesus is calling us back. It's time to come back to holiness. It's time to come back to righteousness. See, this thing is out of control. It, it, the, the world is out of control. Have you noticed? We got 56 genders now. You can go to any bathroom you want to. <laughs> they just got the biggest music mogul in the world. A thousand bottles of oil for his rendezvous. And, and here's, I'm not a prophet. I'm not a prophet. But I'm concerned for that man's life. I think he's going to get Epstein. Because there are so many political players and religious pastors and, and Hollywood stars that have been to his little parties that if he talks, big people fall. I'm not a prophet. Could be wrong. Just saying this as a private individual. <laughs> <laughs> whose image and superscription do you bear and here's what Jesus said they said he said give me a penny he said whose image and superscription is on it they said it, it looks and it looks and it's inscribed with Caesar's he said then give it to Caesar what does that mean it means if you look like the world if you, if you have the world's beats the world's vibes in your heart rather than the world of God. Jesus said, well, give them to the world. That's who they belong to. Because the Holy Spirit is working hard to conform us to the image of Christ. Whom he did foreknow, he did also predestinate to be conformed to the image of Christ. That's all the Holy Spirit is doing. He's not trying to get you a bigger house. He's not trying to get you another car. He's trying to make you Christ-like. And if you can't conform to Christ-likeness, ask of me what you will. I'll give you the heathen for your inheritance. <laughs> ask of me whatever you will. Jesus Jesus could have had anything that he wanted, but you find nowhere in the scripture he ever did one miracle for himself. Not one. That's the discipline. That's the discipline of holiness. And that's what, the whole, that's what holiness is. It's personal Christian discipline. It's not a put on. It's not a fake. It's not how you act. It's what you've become. <laughs> they sang an old song in the assembly, something on the inside. Working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Follow peace with all men. And holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Amen. Would you bow your heads, please, all around the room. Father, I've done my very best to preach your word today. To share this great and glorious gospel. Oh God, I ask you now for the convicting power of your Holy Spirit upon all of our hearts. The areas in all of our lives that we are not conforming to, to Christ, but we're conforming to the false standard of the world. Oh God, bring your conviction upon us. Lord, take not thy Holy Spirit. And help us to obey you and not grieve your Holy Spirit. As you prick our hearts, as you correct our ways, as you chastise those that you love. Oh God, help us not to reject the chastisement, but to follow after you, God. Come on all over the room. If you're able, would you stand to your feet this morning, if you're able. I don't know where you're at. I don't know where you are in your life. I don't need to know, but you know. And God said, I know thy works. So right now, why don't you just close your eyes, just lift your hands to heaven, and you don't have to even say it out loud. Just begin to present your problem areas to him. Father, convict me in this area. I know it's not pleasing to you. I know this is an area, oh God, that, that doesn't please you. I'm moving in the wrong direction, and I'm asking you that you would bring conviction to my life and that you would help me to move to the right direction, to move into things that please you. Come on, just reach out to the Lord right now. God, today if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart. If you hear his voice today, harden not your heart. God, we thank you for the word, God, of conviction.
convicting word, God, that will put a change in our heart, God, that will remove scales on our eyes that we have allowed to come by being adapted and imprinted by the world, God. We release that all to you now, God. We have had faults, we have had times of pleasure, and we have forgotten you, God. But if we have in any area of our life not put you first, God, we put you first today again. We put you first right now, God. Claim this heart. You no longer write your word on stony tablets. You write your word in our hearts, in hearts of flesh, God. Soften our hearts right now. We admit and we give up any sin that we allowed to come against you. We admit and we give up any wrongdoing, any wrong attitudes, any wrongful thoughts, God. Any place where we put anything before your word, we give it up now, God. You are all powerful, God. You are forgiving. You are merciful. And we just thank you for Pastor Lincoln and this word, God, this word that you placed on his heart to come into your people. Let it not go undone. Let it not leave the hearts of people today. Let not the devil steal it on our way out, God. Let it penetrate this heart. Let it do a work in us, God. We know you are doing a work. You are God. You are the same God yesterday, today, and forever. And you are almighty and all powerful. And we surrender to your holiness, God. Holiness without which no man will see you. And we will see you one day, God, because we take your word seriously. We will see you because we believe in who you are and what Jesus Christ has done on the cross. We thank you, God, for working in our hearts, God. In Jesus' most precious holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, that was a good word. And we thank everyone. Amen. Amen. We thank everyone for giving into this ministry because, as always, this is what you're giving for. We thank you for being here today. We thank you for joining us online. Um, one real quick announcement for movie night is September the 27th. It's this Friday, so please join. And if you haven't volunteered, we do need volunteers to help serving and clean up after. So with that being said, we love you. We thank you for coming out today, and we pray for a pa safe passage home and you are blessed and you are dismissed. Let someone know you love them on the way out. Have a good day. Amen.